Hi, this is Nick. Welcome to the channel where we talk all things real estate in the Czech Republic. Today, I'm going to give you my top five things to look for when buying an old house. There's a lot of cheap old houses around the Czech Republic that look really good value. So it's worth looking at if they are, and if this is something you might be interested in buying in the future, make sure you know yeah, the basics for doing this project. One of the main things to look at is the, the statics within the building. So is the building still standing? Will it be standing for a long time? How much repair of that do we need to do? So you can initially look at this by looking for major cracks in the walls. Um, it's always good to look at the, the roof, especially the inside the wooden roof structure to make sure everything's standing well and that there aren't pieces missing or there's water damage, etc. Because, you know, a new roof would be a, a rather large investment. A second major problem that you tend to have with old buildings is damp. Um, now, damp is, of course, bad because it's rotting the, uh, the walls and also it can be quite hazardous to your health if you're living there. So you wanna make sure that any damp problems that you see can be easily identified. Um, some, some damp is caused by uh, water flowing places it shouldn't, so that could be easily fixed by, by fixing the roof, for example, or maybe the guttering isn't going anywhere. But other damp problems can be a bit more, um, a bit more difficult to see. So you know you want to make sure you're not buying a house that maybe has a high water table where the water is actually coming from all around. So if you're looking at seeing damp, it's good to have that fully inspected so you can see where it's coming from and if it's a major problem or not. It's also good to have a look at what connections are available there currently. You know, is it does it have running water? Is the first one? How is the sewerage dealt with? Is this a tank in your own land? Is this connected to um, a to a town or, or village sewerage system. There's not a problem necessarily, but it's good to know what, what you need to deal with in the future. Um, in terms of heating, you also need to know is there gas nearby can, or can it be brought there or is it electricity? Can this be something be self-sufficient in terms of heating? You know, could you have solar panels or something like that? So it's worth, it's worth looking at the different options there as well and knowing what you're getting into. Now some old buildings are heritage protected and some are not. So it's always good to know if the property you're looking at is heritage protected or not. Um, one of the main benefits of it being heritage protected is it's much easier to get grants for work. However, the grant process is slow and, and difficult. And also in general, having it protected means that everything will take a bit longer. So if you need to get planning permission to build something, it's going to take longer and going to be looked at in more detail. So in general, it's probably easier to buy a property that's not heritage protected. So it's good to check that. And it's easily seen on the land registry, whether it is or it isn't. Finally, like any other property, you need to know exactly what you're buying and it's good to know who your neighbours are. Um, by that I mean which plots of land come with the property and how are they connected together. Are there, what, who owns the neighbouring plots of land? Is it you know, the city or the local town, for example? Or is it are they privately owned? You may need permission to cross them. You may need permission to install services across them. You may... You may, if you apply for planning permission, you're going to need every direct neighbor's consent to do your planning permission application. So it's good to know who they are and to see any, any issues quickly and easily. That's all for today. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Take care.